Hey, it's all with a lot, a lot of recommended add-ons to enhance your upcoming Shadowlands experience. Some of these add-ons may sound familiar. Some may sound obscure. Some actually compete with one another in case you like one over the other, and some might not work given the timing of this video's release. But all of these are handpicked by me personally as add-ons that I use or would be willing to use. A big thanks to the Brutusword Party over on Twitch for helping me discover and figure some of these out. And so here are the add-ons in a failed attempt at alphabetical order. Artvark is an auto-selling add-on with a pretty easy to use interface. It auto-sells grays, which should come as no surprise, and lets you compile lists of stuff to sell, or delete, or to whitelist. What's cool about it is that you can simply drag and drop items into this UI to add to the list. I'm used to having to shift-click or type stuff in, which works out fine, but I like the tactile feeling of drag and drop. Also cool, there is a global or account-wide list as well as a character-specific list in case one item means more to one character than the other. You can even drag stuff into the little aardvark button right here, although it's a little bit more neon for my taste. So I just drag the button itself over to the side here, or I can make it invisible. I just prefer to open the big old window with a hotkey. All the Things has been around for a while, but it is THE collection add-on, at least in my opinion. With the new expansion comes a lot of stuff to collect and boxes to check, so it might be a good idea to have all the things to get. <laughs> all the things, you get it? Yeah, okay. Uh, the small problem with an add-on like this is that it's really, it's really memory intensive and can cause a small hiccup whenever you unlock a new transmog or a new achievement. So it's a slight annoyance for some, but it could be worse on older systems. I thought I'd warn you. Bagnon is one of the best basic add-ons out there for its simplicity and more important for me, its search window. Because on occasion, I've been told that I might be a little bit disorganized with my inventory. I don't know. Let me know what you think. So I was super fascinated when I stumbled on Sorted, a different kind of bag add-on that displays your inventory as a straight-up list with text and all. It seems ludicrous, right? Until you check out the filters to the right. With a click, I can filter out all of my weapons, and then sort them by name, item level, or value, and filter them further depending on the weapon type. It makes searching a snap, regardless of the state of my bags, and of course, there is a search field. Personally, I like its functionality compared to other add-ons like Addy Bags that have similar sorting functions, but still expects me to mouse over each icon as if I remember the name and icon associations that have ever existed. The greatest weakness of Sorted, though, is the way that it displays your bank when you're not at your bank. Like, it looks cool, but Sorted does not remember the item IDs of anything in your bank, and so it doesn't show tooltips. That could be a game breaker if you regularly care about what's in your bank while off-site, although personally, I plan on giving this one a go during Shadowlands. Blizzmove has always been a personal favorite of mine that allows you to whip around most, not all, but most windows wherever you like, and also temporarily resize them for viewers if you happen to be streaming or you're obtaining footage or screenshots. Just install it and it simply works, at least most of the time. It doesn't work with frames generated from other add-ons along with some of their new windows. Advanced users can also pick up Move Anything, which gives considerable control over where windows appear when you hotkey them open, so they don't get in your way in the first place. Personally, I'm not OCD enough to care where windows pop up, but you can have both installed for maximum effect. Buy em All has been my favorite add-on for buying mass quantities of stuff. With it activated, you just shift-click to buy a specified amount like you normally do, and then set the quantity that you like. The max button will spend all the available resources that you have to buy whatever you need, whether it's with gold, order resources, service metals, or whatever. Otherwise, it'll buy as much as it needs to fill up your entire inventory. Can I Mog It is a great identifier for people who play alts. So in Shadowlands, when you stumble upon a new batch of BOE blues and greens, you know what to send off to other characters and what you can sell or disenchant. When you mass over a piece of gear, it'll tell you if it unlocks transmog, even if you're on a character that can't normally wear that piece of equipment. This works optimally if you play from only one computer. Sometimes you'll get a false negative when working on multiple computers because one might have seen all of your unlocked transmog while another is not, so just be careful. Some really snazzy map and tracking changes are coming in Shadowlands, but that doesn't mean that add-ons like TomTom Tom and Coordinates will lose relevance. 
Pretty soon, when a rare is up, people will be able to link in general chat a waypoint, which will be fantastic for people without coordinate add-ons. However, for gatherers, it'll still be a popular practice to combine TomTom, coordinates, and gathermate, and then go on endless loops around zones. Meanwhile, Rare Scanner is still my go-to for finding treasures and rares and letting me know if it spawned, and Shadowlands has plenty of stuff to discover, including ones that have unlock conditions. If you're not interested in figuring it out, Rare Scanner is the add-on that will eventually display that information once it's available. Click is what I personally use to set up custom macros, although, well, to be more precise, I don't know jack about making mouse over macros, and I rely on Click to help me out with that. Click sets up my mouse over macros on unit frames with a simple click, and then I decide what hotkey I want to use, and then Click does the rest. So now my guild can stop complaining that I don't cleanse poisons for them. Although I'm just kidding, I'm still probably not going to do it anyway. Dynamic Cam is where I got started in making add-on videos, and it's still chugging along, albeit with errors that might turn you off. I use it for a very specific purpose, and that's to make my field of vision seem greater than it actually is. So if you're interested in a quick tutorial, keep watching. Dynamic Cam's primary feature is to change your camera angle and position depending on the state of your character dynamically, hence the name. But I turn that off by typing in slash DC in my chat window to open up the configuration menu. Go to Situations and select each of the highlighted items in the pulldown, then uncheck the box labeled Enable Situation. Once that's done, go to Settings. Make sure the Dynamic Pitch box is checked, scroll down to Dynamic Pitch Settings, and change the Base FOV Pad to 0.5, just like on screen, and ta-da! This can feel a little bit disorienting for players who aren't used to the camera looking this way, but it's a neat little trick to see things at a more top-down angle. My personal UI is made up of two lightweight add-ons, Dominoes and Pitbull Unit Frames. Dominoes is familiar enough to most people, allowing simple but robust options like moving around toolbars and making less frequently used buttons invisible until you mouse over them to avoid clutter. Pitbull, like just about all other add-ons that concern unit frames, is not nearly as simple. You can customize Pitbull to display unit frames with a disturbing amount of detail, show the things that you want and don't want, display enemy buffs and debuffs at the size that you wish, and more. I've stuck with Pitbull for over a decade, for probably the same reason you've stuck with your unit frame add-ons, because it just works. I've never had any bugs or compatibility issues, and it's regularly updated. I happen to use Pitbull to view cast bars on both me and my target, but Quartz is a great and simple cast bar add-on that does the job in case Pitbull is not for you. You're familiar with encounter helpers like Deadly Boss Mods and Big Wigs, which is great for most raiders as a set-and-forget kind of add-on. But not everyone needs the multiple bars and visual cues. For the person who wants to be as minimalist as possible, it's hard to not recommend GTFO, which provides auditory-only alerts if you're standing in fire, or if you've been standing in fire. Just install it, and you're good to go. Closely related is OmniCC, an ancient but very simple add-on that puts a counter on your abilities while they're on cooldown. Obviously, it's not as sophisticated as a weak aura, but this is a good first step in that direction. And with the way that I play personally, I can handle having these timers a bit out of the way so I can see my very handsome character in action. There are numerous combat assist add-ons out there, and with a new expansion just around the corner, it might be a good idea to at least give yourself some training wheels. Add-ons like Hero Rotation basically tell you what buttons to press depending on your class spec and talent selections and if you're doing single target or AoE. It's expected that these will also support Covenant abilities as well. My opinion though, these are great learning tools for picking up a class or spec that you're not familiar with, but like training wheels, there is a time to take them off and rely on instinct. I know it's ironic to say that considering this is an add-on video, but I hope you know what I mean. Also, in case you don't use boss mods, Loggerhead is a very simple add-on that saves your advanced combat log so you can upload them to sites like Warcraft Logs and find out just how average you are at the game. Just be sure to check back and clear these logs every now and then, unless you're like me and you like having a combat log that's like 10 or 20 gigabytes in size. Minimap Button Bag, or MBB, was a breakaway hit in my guide to add-ons for newbies, and it's a repeat hit in my add-on videos, and so here we are. 
MBB condenses your bajillion add-ons with their minimap icons into an expandable folder that only takes up one button. It's a bag for buttons. <gasps> Brilliant. Nameplate scrolling combat text is another personal favorite of mine, but it adds a lot of customization options, from size to font, colors, and icons that indicate where the damage came from. The default configurations are fine for most people. I just happen to configure the crits to pop out a little bit more for fun. I just talked about an add-on related to nameplates, but not everyone cares for add-ons to enhance them. I usually just recommend quest plates, because all it does is display quest objective counters right next to nameplates, and that's it. It works right out the box, and it's an easy visual indicator that frees you from having to break away to check your progress. But as a tank, I'm also impressed with threat plates. It took a while for me to understand how colors sometimes change, but the gist is that green is good, I have aggro. Red is bad, I don't have aggro. And blue means the other tank has threat, so, you know, we're okay. This too displays quest objective information, but not as simply or as cleanly as quest plates. That said, choose the one that fits your playstyle the best, or install both and figure it out. Narcissus is your character sheet dolled up in a really crisp and modern UI that makes you almost pity the old one. It's great and all, but for me, the real feature is the photo mode that turns this add-on into an internal model viewer for your character with a lot of options. Alter their pose, the lighting, and set up that perfect background. Or green screen it, key the color out, and make your own. This add-on makes those sorts of thumbnails or forum signatures a snap to make. New Openables is a simple add-on that acts as a reminder that there's something you haven't opened, whether it's a satchel, a lockbox, a covenant calling box, an emissary cache, archaeology thing, all of that stuff. All it is is the unopened item on your screen, like a piece of dirt to wipe clean. Of course, you can also whitelist items that you don't want the add-on to inform you of, but overall, it's a nice quality of life add-on to keep you organized. Pratt continues to be my favorite chat add-on for its many, many options, some of which I could care less about, but this add-on checks all the boxes. I can copy URLs, I get timestamps, I can change the font size to something greater than 18, and there's so much more, uh, too much more, in fact. Pratt is all I want, it's updated regularly, and we can move on. Rematch is the most dominant add-on out there when it comes to pet battles. I use it for the feature that automatically sets up your team and their abilities when you mouse over a potential victim, or you know, a pet to battle with, which saves a ton of extra clicks. You can be lazier too, and import strings from sites like Wowhead or Wow Pet Guide with working strategies for virtually every pet battle, as well as those coming in Shadowlands. Just make sure you have the right pets, have them leveled up, and you'll be good to go. As you venture into the Shadowlands, you'll encounter hundreds of new items that you might not have a clue what they do or how valuable they might be to other players. The Undermine Journal add-on is based on the famed website and is a terrific introduction to understand market pricing. With the add-on, mousing over items will display pricing information on your realm from the previous three days, so don't count on this add-on in the first few hours of Shadowlands, but whether it's new or old content, getting a quick snapshot of the value of an item might prevent you from vendoring that one transmog that could sell for hundreds of thousands of gold. TipTac is the current king of tooltip add-ons, and for good reason. Out the box, it works just fine. You can change the location of where your tooltips hang out, and you can include oodles of additional information like who they're targeting, their HP values, and for players, their guild titles and talent specs if that matter to you. The number of options are absolutely exhausting, and it would take me forever to go through, but it starts by tapping in slash tip tack and pressing the anchor button to move your tooltip. That's probably the first thing that you'll consider doing. Transmog Roulette is more for fun than function. Those of you with a massive collection of sets and carefully constructed transmog themes might want to consider a bit of chaos from time to time. It's fun to do during streams so your viewers can look at the horror show too. You can lock slots like tabards so people can see your bare manly chest or the cute shirt underneath. I've tried them all. From World Quest Tab to World Quest List and Angry World Quests, but none of them hold up to what's tried and true and most popular for a reason, World Quest Tracker. Unlike my inventory woes and the benefits that Sorted provides, I don't need to read through a list of World Quests to pick up or ignore. All I care about is the reward. What am I getting? Gold? Anima? A conduit? What? 
I see what I want, I click, and I go. Simple as that. And that's all of the add-ons, and I definitely lost count of how many I name dropped, but yeah, that's all of them. You're probably wondering why I didn't put much focus on add-on platforms like LVY or Weak Auras, but I just did. That and the add-on world is so big that if a hugely popular add-on were to one day not work for whatever reason, there are plenty ready to take its place. I do hope that a few of the add-ons featured here are helpful. Links to all of them are in the description or in the sticky comment below if it happens to not fit. Like this video if it was useful, and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.